Hello, good evening, welcome to our, what are we, a Friday? How the heck is it Friday already? We're on our Friday night episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in a scorching Lime Bay. The weather is beautiful. I've even, now this, you won't believe this, George and I had a little paddle in the sea. Lola's been in for a little swim. She's not really feeling the, the water at the moment, but I'm hoping... Because all of the dogs we've had in the past have loved the water. So hopefully she'll be exactly the same. Look, thanks for joining us once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our night time podcast. Welcome to another episode. How the devil are you? You, yeah, you okay? Good weekend coming up, hopefully. We are, oh my goodness, I'm dinging away. Let me check and see what that is, if it's interesting. Now then, that was a taxi driver who was just getting in touch because I last minute messaged to say, Lee, is there any chance that you can you could fit us in to go to the airport? Because we're popping to Spain just for a little bit of a sneaky long weekend, Vicky and I. We're looking forward to that. It should be fun. I'll do plenty of little video clips so you'll it'll be like you're there with me. As it always is with everything I do. I'm Brett, I'm your host for our Nighttime Podcast. Welcome to another episode. I've got Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you could check those out, that'd be great. We've got a book. It's called Sunday Night Mystery. You'll find that on Amazon if you want to check it out. And we've got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. Time now for some Friday night comedy. A bit of light relief with Dad's Army. It's uh, episode 11 of series two. This is called War Dance. Present Arthur Lowe, John Le Mercher, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> War Dance, featuring John Lorry, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests, Larry Martin, Pearl Hackney, and Wendy Richard. <laughs> Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. The threat of Nazi aggression hangs ever-present over Britain as Hitler attempts to break this island's indomitable spirit. Although many things have had to be rationed, love is still free. At Warrington-on-Sea, Frank Pike, the junior clerk at Swallows Bank, is laying out the morning's post in the manager's office. There is a lady sweet and kind Was never face so pleased my mind I did but see her passing yeah, oh, by. Oh, I, 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 I don't, think we, don't think we want any more of that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Manning, I, I didn't hear you come in. I'm not surprised. Anyway, you will learn as you grow older, Pike, that a bank manager's office is no place for singing. I'm sorry, Mr. Manning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Good morning Wilson. Laughter. By the way, sir, before I forget, I met Jones just now. I'd rather gather... The men are quite keen on the idea you put up at last night's parade. The home guard dance, you mean? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I think they were a little surprised as well. Come to think of it, so was I. I don't see why. You know what they say? All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Uh, Jack who, sir? <laughs> Jack nobody, you stupid boy. Anyway, a dance like this will make the wives and sweethearts feel that they're part of the grand effort. Makes them feel that we're all pulling in the same direction. We will be able to bring a friend in, sir. Of course you will. Who did you have in mind, Pike? One of your old Boy Scout friends? No, sir. A girl. A girl? Oh, well. That's what dancers are for, I suppose. Discuss it with Corporal Jones. He'll be in charge of the invitations. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll bring in the coffee in a minute. Right. Thank you, Pike. There is a lady sweet... Yeah, Pike! Pike! I forgot. Pike. Sorry. <laughs> you know, Wilson, I'm far from satisfied with that boy's work lately. He never stops humming. Well, I, I think he's just happy, sir. But yes, but people don't expect it, Wilson. Mr. Jamison was quite put out yesterday. Well, he came about his mortgage, didn't he, sir? Yes. Pike showed him into the office singing, Buddy, can you spare a dime? <laughs> <laughs> I think perhaps he is letting his thoughts dwell too much on his private life. Oh, don't be absurd. He doesn't have a private life. Mr. Boy. Well, he's 19, sir. I mean, he goes out with an at. Oh, that's very wise. It gets quite chilly in the evenings. <laughs> Oh, no, sir, no, no, no. An 80 years girl. Good heavens. Mm. You want to put a stop to that, Wilson? Never know where they've come from. Yeah, well, she's a, <laughs> she's a local girl, actually, sir. She's, uh, she's on leave, and her name is Violet Gibbons. Violet Gibbons? Yes. I know that girl. Her mother used to clean for us twice a week. 
Obliging, as she used to call it. Oh, yes. Well, now her daughter's obliging Frank. <laughs> that girl used to work at the fish shop, didn't she? That's the one, sir, yes. Oh, no. Not the right sort of background at all, Wilson. What does his mother say? She doesn't know. Well, you'll have to speak to him, Wilson. Well, why me? Well, the boy hasn't got a father. You've known his mother a long time. You're the next best thing. Yeah, well, I, just because she keeps my ration book, I mean, I don't see why I have to act like a Dutch uncle to Frank. You know, you worry me sometimes, Wilson. <laughs> You'd do anything rather than face your responsibilities. You just won't grow up, will you? Well, I, I mean... You're not a middle-aged chief clerk at all. You're a Peter Pan. <laughs> Really, sir? I, I don't know how you ever expect to get your own branch. Well, be that as it may, sir, Frank Pike is not my responsibility. Well, I'm sure a lot of people will be very pleased to hear that. Well... <laughs> what, do you... what do you mean by that? Well, it's not of my business. This is a very small town, Wilson. Tongues wag, you know. People put two and two together. You and Mrs. Pike arrived in the town about the same time. Both from Western Supermare. And when you look at Pike in a certain light, there are resemblances. The whole idea is outrageous, sir. I mean, Mavis would have mentioned it. <laughs> yes, right. I'm sure it's just idle gossip. But at the same time, I think a word to the boy would come best from you. Well, I suppose I could chat to him. Brought your coffee, Mr. Manrin. Thank you, Wilson. Pike. Thank you. Oh, uh, Pike, I have a meeting with the dance committee in the church hall. So don't take any appointments for me after three o'clock. Very good, sir. Right. Right, men. Now, we're all busy men, going about our essential work, as well as being ever alert to defend our beloved land. And I therefore propose that we share the organisation of the function and each be responsible for one aspect of Operation Dance. I would like to second that, Mr Manry. Thank you, Godfrey. Mr Speak, sir. Yes, Joan. I'd like to third it, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. Now, now, what I ask myself, what are the essential ingredients? What do we need for a successful dance? A floor. I... <laughs> I'm not asking for suggestions at this point, uh, Walker. Now, as I see it, there are three requirements. We need music to dance to, food for the inner man, and drink for conviviality. There's one other thing we need, sir. What is that, Jones? Women. Yeah. <laughs> That brings us to the question of a band. Miss Rowlands has offered her services and that of her colleagues. You may recall that uh, they used to provide the musical entertainment before the war at the medical tea rooms. Look, Mr Mannering, look, if you don't mind me saying so, if you get old Miss Rowlands and her friend with the buns on the ear holes and the cello between her legs, <laughs> and that old cow from the library on the art, we might as well all go home. <laughs> I don't often agree with you, Joe, but, man, you're right. Of course I'm right. Yes, I think there is some force in what Walker is saying. The question is, where do we find the musicians? There's the Salvation Army, sir. They're a fine body of righteous men. Oh, that'll be great. Take your partners for fight the good fight. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, Walker. It's enough of that. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but blimey, the Salvation Army. Look, I'll tell you what. There's an RAF holding unit down at Goddleton. I'll pop down there and see what they've got. Good. Well done, Walker. So, in a few short minutes, Operation Dance has been well and truly launched. I feel sure that we will bring it safely and successfully to harbour. Bar and torpedoes. <laughs> Put that picture of the king over the top of the stage, Uncle Arthur. Oh, that's yes, Frank. Yes, sir. That looks awfully good. I I'm going to put the queen up now. Oh, right. Here we are, Wilson. Rosettes for the officials. Yeah. Secretary for you, MC for Jones, oh. Chairman for myself. Green, blue and yellow. Oh, yes, they're awfully smart, sir. Uncle Arthur, I've hung the queen. <laughs> well done, Frank. Just a minute. Shouldn't their majesties be facing each other? What? Back to back like that makes them look as if they've quarrelled. Oh. <laughs> well, shall I change him, Mr. Manry? No, no, don't worry now. Fix it later. All right. Just take these rosettes and put them on the desk in my office, will you? Oh, very good, Mr. Manry. Wilson. Yes, sir? Have you spoken to him yet? What, uh, uh, no, uh, no, not yet, sir, no. Why not? Well, 
The opportunity hasn't presented itself. Presenting itself now is in my office. Yes, well, one can't just dive headfirst into a personal discussion on a delicate matter like this. I mean, one needs the right atmosphere. I mean, a log fire, a cosy chair, a pipe, a glass of port. Peter Pan. <laughs> my God, Mannering, you can hit pretty low when it suits you. <laughs> well, I'll go and see him now. Uh, and don't, don't, don't forget, be firm. Oh, that's right. Ah, <laughs> there you are, Frank. Oh, mm. busy? Oh, yeah, yes, I am a bit. Excuse me, Uncle Arthur. I've just got to go. No, 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 Frank, Frank, Frank. Don't, uh, don't, yes. don't, don't rush away. Don't rush away. Just close the door a moment, would you? Oh, all right. <laughs> My goodness me, you and I don't often get a chance to be alone and have a cosy little chat, do we? Don't we, Uncle? Well, are you looking forward to this dance, Frank? Oh, yes, thank you, Uncle. Well, you, you don't have to keep calling me Uncle, you know. No, Sergeant. Uh, not that either, you see. We're, we're both grown up, men of the world. You're Frank. I'm Arthur. How'd you do? <laughs> Frank, you're, you're not a boy now. We can look each other in the eye and, uh, and talk man to man. That's nice, isn't it? Yes, yes. You see, there, there are heaps of things that we can talk about that we've, uh, well, we've never talked about before. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, Frank, <laughs> don't keep saying that's nice. For heaven's sake, it's terribly irritating. I, I'm sorry, Uncle Sergeant no, Arthur. I, 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 I'm so <laughs> all right, Frank, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to snap at you like that. that. That's all right. It's nice being able to talk man to man, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, yes, indeed. It's nice. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What shall we talk about? Well, uh, I've never chatted to you about, um, well, girls, for instance. Oh, that? Yes. Oh, I know all about the birds and the bees and things. Yes, well, you see, I didn't mean that. Yeah, Miss Beckworth told me. Good. She knows a lot about girls. Yes, I'm sure she does, yes. She knows a fair amount about boys as well. Oh, Frank. <laughs> you see, the point is, who are you taking to the dance? Oh, oh I, I thought I'd take my girlfriend, Violet Gibbons. Yes, you see, well, that's precisely what I wanted to talk to you about. Why, you don't want to take her, do you? <laughs> no, certainly not. No, I, I don't even know her. I didn't think you did. No. Oh, she's beautiful, Uncle yes, Arthur. Of course. She's the most wonderful person in the whole wide world. Yes. I love her, Uncle. Mm -hmm. When I woke up this morning, I wanted to run to the top of the church tower and shout it to the winds. I love Violet Gibbons, I wanted to shout. <laughs> I didn't, though. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think you were very wise. One mustn't be hasty. There are so many things to consider, you see. I mean, is she, um, well, is she suitable, Frank? What for? The bank. <laughs> well, she can't go into the bank. She's in the ATS. No, 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 Frank, Frank. I I'm talking about after the war, you see, when, when all this is over. Oh, she won't want to go into the bank. She'll be married to me. Married? Yes, can you keep a secret, Uncle Arthur? Yes. I'm going to surprise everyone. I'm going to announce our engagement in the middle of the dance. Like Jack Oakey did with Zazu Pitts. Yeah, now, look, Frank, <laughs> I wouldn't do that if I were you. I mean, I think of your mother. It could be an awful shock to her. Oh, no, Uncle, she'll like it. When Jack Oakey and Zazu Pitts did it, she said it was the best part of the film. Yes, well, I, I think it's just possible that this may be different, Frank. Well, thank you, Uncle Arthur. I've enjoyed our little chat. Good. We must do it again sometime. Yes. I've got, I've got to go now and, mm -hmm. and change those pictures of their majesties. <laughs> there is a lady... Now look, boys, I shall announce each dance. And before I do so, I would like you to give me... ta -ra! Yeah, that's right. Evening, Mr. Manrin. Evening, Jones. My word, sir. That's a very nasty black eye you've got there. What? Yeah, oh, yes. Slight accident at home. I, uh, I walked into the door of the linen cupboard. Oh, dear. Now, if you could let me have the sausage roll, sir, I will display them. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jones, but I'm afraid Mrs. Mannering made a slight miscalculation. As a result, half of them were burnt to a cinder. I'm distressed to hear that, Mr. Mannering. Naturally, I was very, I was very vexed. I, uh, I gave her a good dressing down. See, so that's how you come to be sporting a black guy. No, 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 no. Nothing of the sort, Jones. As I said, I, I walked into the door of the linen cupboard. Very well, sir, if you say so. Now, if you and your good lady will stand over there by the stage to greet the guests personally, I will announce them as they arrive. Yes, but I'm... 
I'm afraid Mrs. Mannering won't be joining us, Jones. Hope she's not poorly, sir. No, no. Fighting fit, actually. <coughs> but, um, yeah, look, I don't want to go into it. I'll greet the guests alone. Very well, sir. Very nice. You keep calm, sir, and you stand over there and in your greet in the guest position. There, that's right, sir. That's right, sir. Thank you, Jones. And don't you worry about the eye, sir. No one will notice unless they look at you. Shouldn't we have some music? Good idea, sir. I'll have a word with the band. Lads, can you play some quiet music to cover up greeting the guests by? How about trees? Uh, would trees suit you, sir? Perfectly. Right, I'll make it trees. Stand by, sir, with the drinks. Stand by, hats and coats. Stand by, sandwiches. You better stand by yourself, Jones. I think the first guests have arrived. Oh, oh, good evening, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mr. Godfrey. My word, don't you look smart in your tails and your lovely topper and everything. Well, I'm rather worried, actually. I saw some people arriving outside just now, and they weren't even wearing dinner jackets. Never you mind, Mr. Godfrey. You've done us proud. But my dear father used to say that one should never be embarrassed by being too well dressed. You on your own tonight, Mr. Godfrey? Oh, no, no, no. I brought my sister Sissy. She's just putting her things away in the cloakroom. Right. Mr. Godfrey and Miss Godfrey, who is in the cloakroom. <laughs> oh, good evening, Godfrey. Oh, good evening, sir. By Joe, sir. That eye looks nasty. Uh, yes, yes, Godfrey. I, um, I rather stupidly walked into the door of the linen cupboard. Could I suggest, sir, a little bit of folded Christmas card is awfully good for that. For black eye? Oh, uh, no, sir, for keeping the linen cupboard door shut. <laughs> What you need for a black eye is a hot onion. Really? I've never heard of that. No, oh, Mr. Godfrey, that's for earache. Oh, no, 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 no. It's it's mustard plaster for earache. No, I think you find that's for backache. Yes, all right, all right, Jones. You're neglecting your duties. Right, I'm sorry, sir. Mr. And Mrs. Andrews. Mrs. Andrews, how to do? Mr. Fraser and Miss Bloodwin. Evening, Fraser. Good evening, sir. Delighted you could be with us, Miss uh, Bloodwin. Nice to be here. I see your friend is a land army girl, Fraser. Aye, ah, that's right. By the way, sir, she said to come straight from work. I'm afraid you didn't have time to change into a skirt. Oh, don't worry, Fraser. You've made up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Cotton one or in. I don't know how he got that black eye, but I know fine how we're going to get the other one. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Wilson. Evening, Mrs. Pike. Evening, Joseph. Mr. Jones, have you seen Frank? No, not yet, Mrs. Pike. Arthur, where could he have got to? Oh, don't worry so much, Mavis. I can't help it, Arthur. Do you know, Mr. Jones, Frank's been out practically every evening recently. He says he goes round to a friend and sticks stamps in his collection. Well, that's a nice hobby for a young lad. Well, I don't think it suits him. When he comes home at night, his lips are all sore and swollen. Oh. <laughs> well, hang on, hang on. I'll announce you. Sergeant Wilson and Mrs. Pike. Evening, Wilson. Evening, Mrs. Pike. Evening, sir. Mr. Mannering, you haven't seen my Frank, have you? Uh, well, uh, no, 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 I haven't, Mrs. Pike, but... Uh, Excuse I'm me, sorry, sir. Think, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, don't you think it's time there was some dancing? Pike, right, Joe Wilson, what an awfully good idea. Jones? Yes, sir? Shall we start the dancing? Well, if you insist, sir, but wouldn't you prefer a lady partner? <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Why don't you announce the first dance? Very good, sir. I'll just get me microphone. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> take your partners for a fox trot. <laughs> Hey, Jonesy. What is it, Joe? Look who's just come in. Pikey and his girlfriend. Blimey, now the fun will start. Evening, Mr. Manreen. Evening, Pike. Mr. Manreen, this is my fiance, Violet Gibbons. How do you do, Miss Gibbons? Very nicely, thanks. Arthur, who's that? Just come in with Frank. Oh, why bother about them? Tonight is for us, Mavis. We have the wine, we have the music. We have each other. Yeah, I'm having none of that, Arthur. You wait till you're asked. No, 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 Mavis. <laughs> Come on, Mavis, please. There's not a moment to be wasted, you know. They're playing our tune. Oh. <laughs> Miss Gibbons, I think I know your mother. Oh, yes, quite likely. She had a lot of boyfriends before she married my no, dad. No, 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 I didn't mean that. Quite a few since as well. 
<laughs> Is she really? Yeah. Well, you know what they say. Makes the world go round, don't it? <laughs> oh, I think perhaps you'd better change the subject. Anyway, Miss Gibbons, you misunderstood my meaning. Oh, go on with you. That's what all the boys say. You steer them when they come in the shop. Pennyworth of chips, they say, and show us your pickled onions. <laughs> come on, Frank, let's have a dance. Yes, all right, Violet, I'm coming. She's got a lovely sense of humour, hasn't she, Mr Manley? Oh, yes, lovely. <laughs> Show us your pickled onion. without a single break. I could go on all night, Mavis. Oh, Arthur, that's not what you usually say. <laughs> here, here, Joe. <laughs> Have you seen old Mannering? Man, oh man, he's really knocking that sherry of yours back. Well, it's good stuff, isn't it? Full-bodied, mate. Not a drop is touched until it's ten days old. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Godfrey. Enjoying yourself, I hope? Oh, yes, thank you, Mr. Manning. Very nice. Why aren't you drinking? Dancing. Night's young, you know. Yes, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not. Ha, 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 ha. very good. <laughs> well, where's your sister? Trust she's all right? Oh, yes, thank you, sir. She's just taking a little fresh air, still recovering from that last tango. Really? I didn't see you two on the floor. Well, uh, no, we, we weren't, actually. We found it off the tar end just watching it sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny indeed. <laughs> Mr Fraser, huh? I want to make my engagement announcement now, please. No, no! No, I'm sorry, Pikey. The, uh, the amplifier has just backed up suddenly. No, it hasn't. I just saw Joe switch it off. Well, anyway, you can't do it now. Why not? Well, because, because Mr. Jones is going to make an announcement. I know Jones here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, look, I'm going to make an announcement. What are you going to announce to Mr. Jones? He's announcing his discovery. Yes, that's right. Please, Mr. Fraser, please let me do my announcement. I'm sorry, first. Frank, there's no time. Get a move on, Jonesy. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It is cabaret time at Warminton and Sea, and here with his impersonation of stars of stage, screen, and radio, Corporal Jones. No, John, no, no, I can't, no. no you've got to, man, you've got to. Oh, all right, then. Well, are you ready? One, two. It's Corporal Jones at eight o'clock, oh, can't you hear the chimes? They're telling you to take an easy chair. To settle in the dance hall, look at your radio times, for Corporal Jones at eight is on the air. Good evening, listeners. Why, who is this? I do believe it's Big Hearted Arthur Askey. I thank you. I thank you. Uh, and who, who is this coming down the road this way with his bicycle on? Why, it's Jack Warner. Little girl, little girl, mind my bike. <laughs> Up and down at the railway lane. Very good. Well done. Well done, Jersey. Very good indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, by way of a far nail, who, who is that sitting over there at the bar, having a drink, sitting on a stool? It's Colonel Chinstrap. Hey, don't mind if I do, sir. Hey, don't mind if I do. <laughs> thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, one and all. Is that all right, Chuck? Oh, great. But go back and do Charles Lawton. I can't do Charles Lawton. All right, then, Freddy Bartholomew. Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, <laughs> never mind, it's too late. Ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please. There's something I want to tell you all. Arthur, mm -hmm. what's Frank doing on that stage? I've really no idea, maybe. I know this is going to be a bit of a surprise to some of you, but I have a very important announcement to make. But, but Fraser, Jones, why didn't you stop him? We tried, sir, we tried. This young lady by my side is Miss Violet Gibbons, and we're engaged to be married. Oh, Arthur, what's he talking about? He, he 
He can't mean it. I, I think he does, actually. Oh. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Mavis, Mavis, please, please, don't just lie there. People want to dance. <laughs> Hello, Wilson. Ah. Hope you've gone home. Well, yes, 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 I, I, I did. And then I I thought it might be more peaceful here in the vicar's office, so I, uh, I came back. Very sensible. Mm. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness that dance is over. Oh, yes, I do agree, sir. Excuse me, do you, do you want this chair, sir? No, mm. no, I'm per per perfectly all right. Thank all you, Wilson. Right. I'll be fine over here. Mm-hmm. Were you locked out too, sir? Oh, no, 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 not at all. I've... Elizabeth... Elizabeth's very absent-minded, you know. She uh. must have put the catch on the door, forgetting that I was out. Oh, hello, Mr. Manring. Hello, Uncle Arthur. Good heavens, Frank, look at your mouth, for heaven's sake. It's all swollen. <laughs> must have been licking those stamps again. <laughs> Why have you come back here, Pike? Didn't you get in at home? No. Mum threw a bucket of water over me. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very funny. Mm -hmm. She does that to the cat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to cool the ardour, Frank. He does that all right, Uncle. Uh, <laughs> but if that's what you've got to go through, if you want to get married, I don't think I'll bother. <laughs> yeah. I think you're very wise, Frank. I wish yeah. I'd done the same. It was a wizard dance, Mr. Mannering. Didn't you think so? Yes. <laughs> Pity the phrase I had to hit the verge with that altar candle. <laughs> well, you see, Joan started it, of course, by stuffing that maid of honour down the front of Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, ah. uh, the, <laughs> Mrs. Burgess' dress, shouting Coles to Newcastle. A walker had no business to take his girlfriend down into the crypt. That sort of thing lets the side down very badly. <laughs> Victor was very distressed. Edith Parrish didn't seem to mind. <laughs> it was a good dance. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. In the interest of harmony, I think it's a very good idea to have these little get-togethers occasionally. Makes the wives and sweethearts feel as we're all pulling... pulling... In the opposite direction. Exactly. <laughs> good night, Wilson. Good night, you, sir. Good night, Frank. Uncle Arthur. Mm. Yes, Frank. What is it? You know, I don't think I'm ready for love. No, well, yes, well. <laughs> Perhaps not. No. Does that mean I'm not really a man yet? <laughs> well, yes, I, I, I suppose it does, yes. In that case... I really ought not to look you in the eye, like you said, and call you Arthur, and talk man to man. At least, not very often. Yes, well, there's, uh, <laughs> there's plenty of time for that sort of informality. Yeah, that's what I thought you'd say. Good night, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Good night, young Frank. I <laughs> <laughs> That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessure as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Pearl Hackney, Mrs. Pike, and Wendy Richard as Violet Gibbons, with music provided by Dennis Gom, Tony Arnop, and Len Johnson. War Dance was adapted for radio by Harold Snow and Michael Knowles, and produced by John Dials. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Dad's Army. And, well, listen, don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow with mystery and adventure from the brilliant, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. We've got an episode called The Hatchet House Theft Matter, and it's a good one, so I know you're going to enjoy it. That's going to be going live at 5 p.m. GMT. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash 
Sunday Night Mystery, and we've got a book of the same name. You'll find that on Amazon. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye. Check out our fabulous new podcast, Sunday Night Mystery, every Sunday at 3 p.m. GMT. We delve into unsolved mysteries with gripping tales, thrilling theories, and captivating investigations. From infamous cases to lesser-known mysteries, each episode promises suspense and intrigue. Join the conversation and subscribe now on your favorite podcast platform. Sunday Night Mystery, every Sunday from 3 p.m.